Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be reviewing the Google Nest Mini. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO81. All right, so the Google Nest Mini, um, this, despite its name, is not in fact a Nest thermostat or one of their um, security cameras or anything like that. The Google Nest Mini is the second generation of the Google Home Mini. So this is uh, what we used to call a Google Home device, right, where you speak to it and it's a smart speaker and it has the Google Assistant built in and everything. Um, they, But they have taken the Nest branding name and applied that to the uh, Google Home lineup. Um, oddly enough, the Nest name is the only part of the Nest branding that has gone with that. Like there isn't the whole, um, you know, kind of blue N logo uh, that that is associated with Nest and everything. All of the visual branding is still very much like under the Google umbrella. It's got the rainbow G uh, on, on the cover of the box and everything. Um, the device itself looks exactly like a Google Home Mini. So I'm not sure exactly what Google was thinking with their branding strategy here. Um, Because like, for example, their Google Assistant devices that have a screen, right, that used to be called the uh, Google Hub, Google Home Hub, something like that, um, is now called the Nest Hub and the Nest Hub Max. But we also still have the uh, regular Google Home uh, is still in the product lineup and it hasn't been replaced by any like second generations or anything like that. Um, That's the one that looks like an air freshener. Uh, And then there's also still the Google Home Max, which is the giant rectangular speaker um, that uh, has, you know, a lot of power behind it. And, uh, and that one hasn't been replaced by a second generation either. And both of those are still known as Google Homes. Um, but then we also have all of these other Nest named Google Assistant devices that are out there as well. But this is Google branding that we're talking about. So I suppose I shouldn't be uh, too surprised here. So, like I mentioned, it looks physically very, very similar to the original Google Home Mini. If you're just, uh, you know, examining them sitting on a table next to each other, um, they you, you won't notice a difference at all. They both have the same uh, kind of cloth covering over the top. Um, they both have their microphone uh, mute switches in the exact same place. Um, if you look all the way around on the backside, you will notice that uh, one of them uses uh, micro USB. The Google Home Mini used micro USB for power, um, but the Google Nest Mini uh, uses a proprietary like little circular tip uh, for, for power. This is the kind of like um, power cord that you would uh, expect to see on like a netbook charger from like 10 years ago or whatever. I do think that this is a step in the wrong direction. Um, I have been wanting everything in my life to uh, draw power over USB-C. Um, that didn't happen here. But also, I mean, the the Google Home and the Google Nest minis um, are devices that just sit on a shelf and are plugged in all the time. So it doesn't ultimately matter that much what kind of charging port it uses uh, unless something goes wrong like the the cat chews through the power cord and you need to replace it or whatever so yeah i don't think that this is the end of the world Speaking of the power cable, um, the little clips that uh, come built onto the power cable that you know you can use to kind of secure it. Um, it if it, if it's too long for where you have the Google Home, or see, I can't stop calling it the Google Home, the Google Nest Mini. Uh, if the cord is too long for where you have it sitting relative to the nearest uh, outlet, um, you can you know coil up the cable and use uh, some of these clips to. To, um, secure you know those those lengths of cable into a nice coil um, the the clips on the Google Nest mini are uh, much more secure than the ones that came with the Google home mini um, they actually like physically 
clip shut, whereas the uh, the ones on the Google Home Mini just kind of held everything by a little bit of tension, but they never fully shut. Another improvement for the physical build of the Google Nest Mini is that it has a little screw mount built onto the bottom of it so that if you want to mount it onto your wall, uh, you don't have to buy like a $15 wall mount uh, to go with it. Um, I did test it with the wall mounts that I have from my Google Home Minis, and uh, it fits in those as well. So whichever direction you want to take this, whichever approach, um, either one will work. You, you could either just use a screw and use that one screw to uh, mount it on the wall, or you could use an existing wall mount. All right, let's move from talking about the physical build to some of the software aspects. Um, when I first plugged it in and it turned on, I noticed that it has a different startup chime. It still is kind of in the same realm as the Google Home Mini's uh, startup chime was. Sounds just a little bit nicer and I found it rather delightful. The setup process is the same seamless setup process that we have gotten used to with all of the Chromecast and previous Google Home uh, devices. You just uh, open up your Google Home app on your phone and it, uh, it gives the Google Nest Mini the Wi-Fi password and everything and it uh, sets itself up. And, uh, and if you've never had a Google Home device in, in your house before, then um, you'll probably have to go through a little bit more setup. But for me, um, already having all of these in my house, uh, I, it, it, was, it was, you know, I just added it to the existing home, told it what room it was in, um, and uh, we were off to the races. Now, being that this is a Google Assistant device, um, all of the like voice-activated controls and abilities are going to be exactly the same as any other uh, Google Home device that you expect. Um, I'm not going to get into that a whole bunch here in this review. Um, if you if you are trying to choose between the Google Assistant and some other smart assistant uh, platform, you know. Um, Go, go research a, a little bit more uh, through some other reviews, um, but here we're just reviewing the hardware of the uh, Google Nest Mini. The controls for the Google Nest Mini are pretty similar to the Google Home Mini with uh, one significant improvement. Um, so it has a physical mic switch on the outside, uh, just like the Google Home Mini did. Um, you can tap on the left and right sides of the device to adjust the volume. Um, and this time, it has like little lights that actually uh, light up on those sides of the device, um, which was pretty delightful. And now you can also tap in the middle of the top of the device to play or pause, which is awesome. This was supposed to be a feature on the original Google Home Mini, um, but if I remember correctly, there was something something going on with like the um, units that they sent out to reviewers and journalists that uh, people discovered that like it was it was listening when it wasn't supposed to, and um, Google traced the problem to the like physically tapping on the top of the device uh, control that you know normally would um, play and pause and you know make it stop listening, um, and and that wasn't working properly, so they just disabled that feature for all of the units. Um, but I guess they got it right this time. Um, and uh, so now you can tap on the middle of your uh, Google Nest Mini to uh, play or pause any, any media that you've got playing back. Speaking of playing back media, the sound quality. Um, I set this uh, device side by side with a Google Home Mini to do some comparisons and had them playing the same music and I just alternated it between the two devices. Um, and I definitely have to say that it sounds slightly richer than the old Google Home Mini. The Google Home Mini was a, a little bit treble heavy, um, and uh, the, the Google Nest Mini has just a little bit of added bass um, that makes it sound uh, just a little bit more full, a little bit more rich uh, in the sound quality department. It's not like, you know, a, a, a game-changing difference, but it is enough to uh, be noticeable when you are playing back the same music side by side between the two devices. 
And lastly, let's talk about the microphones on this device. Um, I didn't have any trouble in my testing getting it to hear my voice or understand what I was saying. Um, I had it sitting next to a Google Home Mini, uh, just for comparison's sake, and uh, both of them picked me up um, in all of the same circumstances. Um, and actually, um, you know how all of the Google Home devices, if multiple devices in the same household like hear you at the same time, um, they will kind of coordinate with each other and determine who hears you better and, and you know which one of the devices should respond. Um, the Google Nest Mini was always the one that got to respond to me, um, which uh, to me means that it, it has a l slightly better microphones um, and was able to hear me a little bit better uh, in every single case, you know, no matter what other media was playing back or um, you know what other background noise there was uh, it was always able to hear me so final thoughts on this device if you are choosing between like the google home mini or the google nest mini um, 100 percent, i think that the google nest mini is the one that you should buy um, if you already have a Google Home Mini, uh, it's not worth upgrading to the Google Nest Mini. They're not different enough uh, to warrant that. Um, but uh, yeah, I, th I think th this is a good kind of iterative step forward um, for the Google Assistant line of devices um, that, uh, that we have in our homes. Thanks for listening to this episode of Second Opinion Reviews. I have been your host, Ian R. Buck, and you can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck. This episode of Second Opinion is released under a Creative Commons attribution license, so feel free to use any part of this episode as, as you see fit, uh, as long as you link back to the original page, which once again is thenexus.tv slash SO81. If you would like to discuss this episode with other listeners, please go to our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash TV. And if you are willing and able to support us financially as we continue to make technology-focused podcasts, you can join us on Patreon at patreon.com slash TV. And uh, speaking of Patreon, we have something pretty special going on. Um, so this Google Nest Mini that uh, was shipped to me by Google for free because I am a Google Fi subscriber, um, they've thrown so many Google Home Minis and Google Nest Minis at me for free that I have actually run out of rooms in my house to put them all in. Uh, so this one that I was uh, testing out for just a few days um, in order to do this review, now that I am done with the review, I'm going to be giving it away to one random supporter on Patreon. So if you want to be a part of this drawing, um, make sure that you join us on Patreon We'll be doing the drawing in three weeks' time. So today, the day that this episode is published, is January 26th, 2020. Um, so in three weeks, on February 16th, we will be uh, choosing who wins the Google Nest Mini. Uh, and then we will announce it on uh, February 22nd or 23rd um, in episode 83 of Second Opinion. Um, and we'll also contact the person who won it, of course. All patrons at all reward levels are uh, eligible for this. And, uh, and remember, you don't have to continue to be a patron uh, long term in order to win this. You just have to um, sign up on Patreon, uh, even if it's just for a one-time donation. Your odds of winning are, of course, dependent on how many people uh, support us on Patreon, but since we have a fairly small audience here, uh, I'd say that your odds are pretty good if you join us. Once again, that's patreon.com slash TV. Until next time, have a good one. The Nexus, the Nexus, the Nexus TV podcasts from, from the, the technological, technological convergence. convergence.